Alright guys, so it's time for our Pokemon Legends Arceus damage report. Which, again, like I said in the last video, these are very, very long overdue. <laughs> I don't really have any excuse for that, other than just laziness and lack of motivation to actually watch the fucking playthrough for it. But I did watch a complete playthrough of this game. I did not buy it, which I'll, I'll get very into depth of why I did not do that. But, anyway, diving right in, again, first and foremost, I do want to talk about the decks, because there are only 242 Pokemon in this game, which means there's a whopping 663 missing, since these games added seven new ones, which, honestly, it's just laughable at this point, like, especially, this is a game that's completely based around completing the decks and then to have so few pokemon in that actual decks it's just it's absurd we're back to pre-gen 2 levels at this point like the only games that have less pokemon in it than this is the gen 1 games and let's go which are the shitty remakes of the gen 1 games so it it's a joke but Anyway, like I said, there are seven new Pokemon. There are also 17 new regional variants, so 17 Hisuian forms. Uh, that is including the new form for Basculin, which I know there's some debate about whether that technically counts as a regional variant or not. I'm counting it because I don't care. Uh, the distribution for these variants are also fairly decent. Uh, much more like the Galarian forms than the Alolan forms, which were all limited to just Kanto ones. So we got four from Gen 1, we got three from Gen 2, we got six from Gen 5, three from Gen 6, and one from Gen 7. So pretty solid distribution. Gen 8 didn't get anything because they're the newest ones, obviously. And Gen 4 didn't get any because this is, you know, still technically a Sinnoh-based game, even though it's called the uh, Hisui region, so that makes sense. Uh, as far as the designs and everything goes, I'll throw them up on screen now. I actually liked most of these designs. Uh, really good, actually. There was a handful that I wasn't real crazy about. Uh, Hisui and Lilligant, I'm not much on. Uh, Enamorous, the new uh, Force of Nature, the, the fourth genie. I'm not much on her design, the altered form or the Therian one, but at least, you know, it, it's fitting within the other. All, all the genies kind of look odd. So I'm, I'm not particularly bothered by it or anything. Uh, most of the other ones, um, at least a decent fan of. Like, th there were several that I actually really liked a ton. The Hisuian Zorua line is fantastic. Uh, the regional variants for all the starters are fantastic. Decidueye, Typhlosion, and Samurott. I liked all those Hisuian versions. As far as the new Pokemon, you know, uh, Basque Legion is fantastic. Ursaluna is fantastic. Weird Deer uh, I like Sneasler a lot, even though he is a very goofy design. I think it's one that works. Uh, also, his name is really funny. So, I ended up liking most of these really good. I think they did a far better job with these than they did with the initial uh, new set of designs from Sword and Shield. Now, that being said, there was also one other thing added in these games, which were new forms, origin forms, for Dialga and Palkia. Which, these things, on the other hand, are absolute, complete fucking abominations. These look terrible. I have no idea who gave the green light on these, but they gotta be smoking some good shit. These... These look awful. These look like somebody took the Dialga and Palkia models into Blender and just played with them and turned them into garbage. I, I get that they're supposed to be, you know, their designs are supposed to have some elements of Arceus's design into it because of, you know, their position in the story. 
But there has to have been a better way to do that without turning them into this. Palkia became a fucking double amputee centaur for some reason. Motherfucker got shoulders and no arms. Like, what the fuck? It's, <laughs> it's just retarded looking. If he had arms, Palkia wouldn't be too bad. It still wouldn't make any sense that he randomly turned from a dragon into a centaur. But if you gave him some arms, I could deal with that design. But without the arms, he, he just looks dumb. Now, Dialga, on the other hand, my boy Dialga, he, he got royally fucked. There's just, there's no saving this. This whole thing is a mess. They gave him a giant fucking throat tumor, which looks absurd. And then he's got a diamond-shaped butt plug shoved up his asshole. Like, who, who thought this was a good idea? His front legs look like they got ran over by a steamroller. Like... I, I can't say these are the absolute worst designs in the entire franchise because Ace Q still exists, but these are right down there with them. They're, they're rubbing uh, shoulders and no arms with Ace Q and Alolan Dugtrio as some of the absolute worst designs to ever come out of this franchise. Like, I, I'm actively angry about how bad these look. Especially compared to Giratina's origin form, which is a, a great design. I just, I have no idea what happened. It's it's very apparent to me why these two didn't end up being, you know, version mascots. Because putting these on the cover couldn't have helped anything. So, Dialga and Palkia aside, I was a fan of most of this batch of designs. But those two just really take the cake as just, just... The fucking dribbling shits as far as Pokemon designs go. Now, as far as the rest of the decks and, you know, what's included and what's not, uh, there were no gimmicks, of course, so no Mega Evolutions, no Z-moves, no maxing, which I think was expected by everyone at this point. Uh, there was no other regional variants, and by that, I mean there were no Alolan forms, uh, except for one exception, which I'll get to in a moment. No Galarian forms whatsoever. And also, any non-Hisuian form for anybody who did get a Hisuian form was not in. So, like, Cantonian Growlithe, or uh, Univen Zorua, or anything like that, those were not in this game either. So if they got a Hisuian form, their Hisuian form is the only thing in the game. And all the Alolan forms and all the Galarian forms are not in, except there was two exceptions to both these things. Alolan Vulpix was in, and by extension, of course, Alolan Ninetales as well. Uh, that one, I guess, was just in because it's popular. I don't know why that, that one randomly got included and the other ones didn't. Uh, the other exception to this would be Jotonian Sneasel, since uh, Weavile was in, and Jotonian Sneasel has to be in to evolve into Weavile, since Sneasler evolves from uh, Hisuian Sneasel. So he was in because of his relation to Weavile, and Weavile was included because all the Gen 4 mons were in this game. So... It made more sense for that one to be an exception. I don't know why Alolan Vulpix was in. Uh, once that reminds me, I, I do need to give them a little bit of credit here because they did something here that solved one of the problems that they had in Sword and Shield where the new evolutions, the legacy evolutions, weren't all limited to regional variants this time. You know, in Sword and Shield, all the legacy evolutions like Obstagoon and Surfetched and Rune Regis and all those, those all evolved from Galarian forms. And I thought that was stupid. I thought some of them should have evolved from their regular forms. Uh, that's something they did do here because, you know, things like Sneasler evolves from Hisuian Sneasel, but things like Ursaluna evolved from uh, Jotonian Ursaring. And Cleaver evolved from Cantonian Scyther, 
So some of them evolved from variants and some of them didn't, which I think is a better way to go about it. So I'll give them credit for fixing that one issue I had with Sword and Shield. Uh, also, another thing to note, of those 242 Pokemon, all of the Gen 5 or later Pokemon are not included in this game, except for ones that are directly related to someone who got a variance or got a new Pokemon. So, like, the other forces of nature are in because of an Amorous, and obviously things like Univan Rufflet are in because Hisui and Braviary exist. So, uh, things like that. If they're evolutionarily related to someone who got a variant, or they're within the same group, like an Amorous, uh, also, you know, things like Sylveon and such, those are in. But other than that, all the other Gen 5 or later lines are not in. Which means absolutely no one from Gen 8 is in. Well, no one from, you know, Sword and Shield Gen 8. This is technically Gen 8 as well. But no one from Sword and Shield is in none of the new Pokemon that were introduced in those games. Which most of those were shit designs anyway, but still, they should be in if you're going to make the fucking shit. So, anyway. Uh, moving on from the whole Dex debacle and getting into the actual meat of the game. Uh, the main uh, setup of it is you got this map. It's split into five different main areas. The main story is you basically go into each one of these areas, you catch a bunch of random Pokemon, uh, you find the noble Pokemon of that area, which is a Pokemon that's big and has been blessed by Arceus or some horseshit. Uh, anyway, it's going nuts because I got struck by lightning, so you have a boss battle with it where you throw bombs at it made out of its favorite food, and then you calm it down. And once you've calmed all the nobles, it goes to the climax, where you can fight the Alga and Palkia and catch them. And then there's a brief post-game episode where you can also uh, face off against Giratina, and then once you complete the decks, eventually you can face Arceus. So, as far as the main story and everything, I thought it was fine. Uh... Again, I guess we're grading on a curve a little bit here by Pokemon standards. It was definitely a step up from the the Sword and Shields story. Uh, I found most of the characters to be likable, other than Melly, who was absolutely just an annoying cunt. And then those three uh, Miss Fortune sisters, uh, who really had no reason to exist. Like, they added nothing to this game whatsoever, and if you just removed them entirely, it wouldn't hurt anything at all. So, other than that, I thought it was mostly fine. Again, a lot of the characters are supposed to be ancestors of, you know, characters we know from mostly Diamond and Pearl, but also, you know, a few from other games. We had uh, that one kid who looked like he was... The ancestor of Clay, he had the same hat and everything. I can't even remember his fucking name right now. But anyway, outside of the main story, the basic thing you're spending most of your time doing in this game is just working on completing the decks. Which, I wasn't a huge fan of the way this was set up, because a lot of it just felt like busy work. Uh, to complete the decks entries, you can't just catch the Pokemon. You have to complete these research tasks, which... Uh, there's different ones for each Pokemon, but most of them involve either catching multiples of the Pokemon or seeing it use a certain move a certain number of times or in a certain style, either strong style or agile style. Uh, things like that, evolving it a certain number of times, whatever. Uh, most of that just felt like busy work and didn't really feel necessary it felt like padding because this game doesn't really have much content outside of that and they needed something for people to do so i i'm not much on that whole concept i think that could have been streamlined a lot better and replaced with more meaningful things to do which speaking of which a lot of the other mechanics that we are used to from main series games just were not present in this game whatsoever there is no breeding at all. There is no fishing. 
There is no multiplayer battles in any fashion. Uh, the only real side thing to do, there are these balloon races where you can ride on Weird Ear and like run around and pop these balloons that are shaped like... Uh, is it Drift Loon or Drift Blim? I don't even remember. It's giant balloons and you pop them with Weird Ear and that's a, that's a side thing. It reminds me a little bit of the Mantine surfing from uh, Ultra Sun and Moon. Beyond that, uh, there is a training grounds at the one village, the Jubilife Village, which is the only village in the entire game. It's the only, like, it's your hub world where you go out to all the different areas from. There is a training grounds there that acts as basically like a battle facility. Uh, there are very, very few trainer battles in the whole game. Uh, there aren't any trainers just out in the wild doing anything. The only trainer battles that you encounter are the ones that are, you know, part of the story. And then once you go to the training grounds, you can re-battle uh, most of the characters that you faced throughout the story in a couple of different formats. So there's that. Uh, also, this, I think, uh, I was so late in making this video that I actually released an update, uh, which was called Daybreak that added a small amount of extra content to the game. Uh, it was a handful of extra uh, missions to do, a short little storyline where there was like these, uh, what do they call them, massive mass outbreaks or something like that. Anyway, there, there was a short little plot line where you're supposed to be solving the mystery of that, and then you didn't solve it at all, and instead just uh, watched the sunrise. So, <laughs> so there was a short little story with no resolution, and then they also added another thing that kind of acts as a pseudo-battle facility, which they call the Eternal Battle Reverie, where basically you go to sleep in your house, and you enter some kind of dream realm where you meet Arceus again, and he lets you fight just a bunch of random Pokemon. So, that was kind of a secondary battle facility kind of deal. Uh, when sh one thing I do, I do want to give them credit for this. They did have a proper quest system in this game, like, you know, your more typical JRPG would have. Which is something that I've been wanting to see in the series for a while now. So, I'm glad that they finally implemented that, and that would be one of the few things from this game that I would like to see carried over to future main series games. Uh, of this quest system, there was 27 missions, which the missions were the main story quests. And then there were 122 requests, which were your, basically your side missions. Now, most of these requests were just like basic fetch quest stuff. You know, bring so-and-so a certain item, show so-and-so a certain Pokemon or a completed Pokedex entry for a certain Pokemon. Things like that that were relatively simple. Uh, some of these requests are also locked to having save files from other Pokemon games, from having... Let's see, I think there was ones for Let's Go, Sword and Shield, and BDSP, I believe. Uh... Those, uh, some of those let you catch some of the mythicals like Shaman and Darkrai and stuff. So, uh, the, the side quests weren't all that intriguing for the most part. A few of them were fine. Uh, most of them were just kind of like boring, basic stuff. Now, as far as the gameplay changes go, I'm not gonna get too deep into like all, every little mechanic that was changed and stuff. You know, they... Uh, changed how, obviously, how priority and stuff moves with the turn order, and they changed status conditions and weather and all these different things. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of that. I don't really have that strong of an opinion on all of it. Anyway, uh, my main issue, they removed abilities and they removed held items, and there really is no need for that, I don't think. I feel like that's just stripping content for no reason. Uh, I don't think that having those sort of 
interfered with any of the new mechanics or changes that they wanted to implement anyway. So I don't really see the need to remove those, but they did anyway. So I wasn't a fan of that. One other thing I guess I need to talk about here is the Alpha Pokemon, which got a, quite a bit of focus, which all this is is it's just Pokemon that are big. <laughs> there really isn't anything more to it than that. I mean, you know, it's a little bit more challenge to catch them in the overworld since they're uh, generally higher level and a uh, more difficult fight. But once you catch them, the only difference between them and a regular Pokemon is that they're significantly larger than that Pokemon would usually be. Once there's already size differences in this game for every species of Pokemon, but it's usually just a small variation in size, while the Alpha Pokemon are very significant uh, in their size difference. Which, somebody at Game Freak has got to have a fucking size fetish at this point, because every game we get now has some kind of size-related mechanic. We had the fucking totem Pokemon in Gen 7. Then we had the maxing uh, gimmick from Sword and Shield. Now we got alpha Pokemon in this game. Like, what is going on? I'm so sick of having these new features that are just Pokemon models scaled up. Like, I, I don't see the appeal to this. I don't know why people care about this so much. But that that's what we're getting. Speaking of which... I have to mention this here, which, th this may f sound like a stupid complaint to some people, and honestly, it may be a stupid complaint, but I don't care, it bothered the fuck out of me. So, the character you play as, the player character, who, you know, obviously they looked a lot like uh, Lucas and Dawn. We saw earlier that the player characters were supposed to be named Ray and Akari, it turns out, the way I understood it anyway, was that Ray and Akari are actually the one that is your quote-unquote rival. They don't really act as a rival, but the, the side character that you interact with in the game, whichever gender you don't pick, uh, that is who Ray and Akari is, and it was not outright stated, but it was heavily implied that the character you're playing as actually is Lucas and Dawn. Because at the beginning of the game, you're basically sent into the past from the future. You're not actually playing as, like, their ancestor or anything. You are displaced through time by Arceus. And, you know, it, it's implied that you come from a world where, you know, catching Pokemon is commonplace and everything like that. So, they imply that it was Lucas and Dawn. Which, that's fine, I've got no issue with that. My issue with this is, when you went back in time, since you're from modern day, you have a fucking smartphone. And the smartphone gets turned into this piece of shit. Which is the Arc phone. So basically they restyled your phone to make it, you know, look like it has an Arceus case on it or some shit. This pissed me off to an extreme degree, which it probably shouldn't have, but it did. I wish these people had a fucking smartphone shoved up her damn ass crossways. I am so sick of phones. I hate mobile gaming. I hate Pokemon Go. I hate what mobile gaming has done to gaming in general. I just hate smartphones. I hate dealing with them. I hate using them. And yes, I see the irony of recording this video on a smartphone, but... Regardless, I don't like phones. This game was supposed to be set in an ancient period, you know, far in the past. This was going to be the one time where I didn't have to deal with a fucking phone, and that's still what we ended up with. It's out of place. I don't care what bullshit they cooked up to explain it. It's retarded, it's stupid, it's unnecessary, and I fucking hated it. And it's actually one of the things that significantly contributed to me deciding not to get these games. And that may sound irrational to you, and I don't give a fuck. I, I, can't, I can't stand it. So, I had to go on my little ARC phone rant there. But anyway, uh, besides that, the crafting system, I'll mention that here. I was a fan of the crafting system. I think that was a good idea. Uh, 
it could be improved a little bit in some ways, but that would be something I would like to see continue in future games. Uh, the moves, I, I probably should have mentioned this earlier when I was talking about the deck stuff, but they added 24 new moves to this game. And they removed a whopping 687 for a total of 179 moves actually in the game. Which, again, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, I counted these by hand, so if I'm off slightly, you know, give me a break. But I should be pretty close. So that is an obscenely small amount of moves, I think. Uh... And there's really no reason to remove that many. I know some of them would conflict with some of the gameplay changes because uh, there's no double battles or anything. So any kind of move that's focused on double battle stuff like Helping Hand or something obviously wouldn't work too well. Uh, you can face multiple enemy Pokemon at once, but you can only send one of yours out at a time. Also with things like, you know, changes to weather and such... Uh, some of the moves obviously wouldn't be able to function unless they were completely reworked, but that that's not the case for the vast majority of these moves. Like most of them could have just fit in fine, and they just chose not to include them. So that that's a that's a that's another huge cut for these games. Uh, one thing I do want to mention here also that seems like a small thing, but it's one of the ones that I found the most annoying was that uh, wild Pokemon can flee in this game. Which, I'm not, you know, I've, I've made it clear before, I'm not a fan of the whole uh, catching Pokemon without battling them thing, which is a heavy feature in this game, which is another thing I didn't like. However, in most cases, not in all of them, but in most cases... You could just ignore that if you wanted to, because you, you sneak up on the Pokemon and you throw the ball at them to catch them. But if you throw a ball with one of your Pokemon in it near them, then it starts a battle. So most of the time, if you wanted to, you could just always start the battle and then battle them and catch them that way and not bother with the, you know, stealth catching mechanics and all that shit. So if you wanted to choose to play that way, which would be the way I would play if I actually did buy this game, then you have that option for at least 90% of the time. Now, the wild Pokemon being able to flee from those battles that you start puts a big damper on this because that is really the most annoying aspect of the Safari Zone, <laughs> uh, at least in the older games. Which, you know, when I was playing through, like, Gen 3 games, I remember all the time being terrified of finding a shiny Pokemon in the Safari Zone because they might run away. Which, actually, one time, I think I did catch a shiny female Nidoran in... Uh, it was either Fire Red or Leaf Green. I can't even remember at this point. But I caught a shiny in the Safari Zone, and I was terrified the entire time because I thought I was going to break out of the ball and ran away. But... You know, having that be a problem constantly for every wild battle in this game, I think, just really kind of kills the whole experience of that. So that that that's something that I really wish they didn't implement. Now, on the other hand, again, like in Sword and Shield, it did get quite a few pretty decent quality of life improvements. Uh, again, I'd say a lot of these are canceled out by the huge uh, anti-quality-of-life implementation of not having all the fucking Pokemon in. But quality-of-life stuff, uh, you can have on-demand evolution now instead of a Pokemon just automatically evolving when they hit the certain level or evolution conditions or whatever. You actually go into the menu and manually press a button to make them evolve. Which, I like that idea. I think that is a very convenient thing, especially for uh, any kind of Mon that you, you know, want it to learn a move that maybe its evolution doesn't learn. Uh, you don't have to, you know, cancel the evolution every time they level up, or you don't have to, you know, give them an Everstone or something like that. Which, <laughs> there's no held items in this game, so that's not an option. But, uh... 
I, I like the concept of being able to choose when your evolution happens. So that that's a neat thing. Uh, also, your entire move pool is accessible all at the same time. So once they learn a new move, it's just added to the pool. And whenever you want, you can go into the pool and select which four moves from all the moves that they've ever learned are the moves that you'll actually have equipped at a time. Which, again, is a lot more of a preferable method, I think, to how it's historically been done to where uh, they learn a new move and they had to forget one. And if you want to remember one of the old ones, you had to go to the move relearner and, you know, it's a whole process. Uh, I like this a lot better. It's just more intuitive where you just add the move to the pool and then you can swap between them. It also makes swapping between different builds and experimenting more with your Pokemon a lot easier to do. So I like that idea. Uh, they also added a linking cord item to evolve any Pokemon that normally evolves through trade, which is an idea that they straight up stole from a bunch of ROM hacks that have an item similar to that, which I'm fine with. I would, I'd say steal more ideas from ROM hacks because a lot of those have some good ideas on them. But <laughs> that, that's another thing I'd like to see uh, continued in future games that I highly doubt will be. Uh, they could still evolve through normal trade like normal if you wanted to do that, but if you didn't want to trade them or couldn't trade them for some reason, you could just use a linking cord item on them instead. So I, I actually like having that as an option. So overall, my opinion on, these ga on this game, uh, I was more intrigued going into it, but once we actually got to see everything about the game, I wound up being pretty underwhelmed. Like I said, most of the deck stuff just felt like busy work to me. The gameplay loop didn't really grab me too much. I feel like there should have been uh, more significant side content and more like, different things to do. Like Compared to a regular Pokemon game, you got a lot more uh, trainer battles. You, know, you got your whole uh, Pokemon League challenge and all that as well as side things like breeding and fishing and all these different things to do. This game, there's catching Pokemon and doing the main story and then catching more Pokemon in a game that has very, very, very few Pokemon to actually catch. So it just felt shallow to me. And again, like I said, I'm not a fan of the whole sneaking up and catching Pokemon without battling things, so having to work around that would just make it feel like more of a chore. So, I, I was not impressed with, these, with this game in general. Uh, the concept is fine. If they wanted to continue, like, Pokemon Legends as kind of like a sub-series within the main series kind of deal and do more games like this in the future. Uh, I wouldn't be totally against that. I would like to see some changes and some improvements. Uh, I would not want to see this become the standard for the main series Pokemon games, which, I mean, let's be honest, I'm probably never buying a main series Pokemon game again the way things are going. But regardless... If they want to make it kind of its separate sub-series own thing and improve upon some of the ideas that they introduced here, I wouldn't be totally against that. But this is in no way the wonderful thing that people are making it out to be. Which, I gotta talk about that a little bit here. The reaction to this game has been absolutely absurd. Like, I've seen so many people talking about how this is the greatest Pokemon game ever made and they love it so much and it's so fantastic and this should be what the future of all Pokemon games are, and all this horse shit. And these people gotta be out of their fucking mind. This game is boring. This game is underdeveloped. This game is missing massive amounts of everything that it should have. If you want this to be what the Pokemon series is, then I don't know what kind of drugs you're on. I just, I, I don't understand. Apparently, people's idea of the perfect Pokemon game is a Pokemon game that 
plays completely different from a Pokemon game and has as few Pokemon in it as possible. That doesn't make sense to me. I just don't fucking understand it. I don't see the appeal of running up to a Pokemon and just throwing a ball at it and catching it without fucking doing anything. I hated that shit in Go. I hated that shit in Let's Go. I hate that shit in the anime. I hate that shit here. It's retarded. I don't see how catching 15 Bidoofs is considered a good gameplay experience as long as you can move the camera around while you're doing it and one of those Bidoofs is the size of a Volkswagen. I don't fucking understand. This is not what I want to see out of a Pokemon game. I want to see a more refined version of what the older games were. Gens 1 through 5 were continuously improving upon that formula. Gen 6 kind of took a sidestep. Gen 7 deteriorated slightly, and then Gen 8 fell into the shitter. If they had continued just refining the formula and improving and advancing and adding in new things and continuing down that same road, the level we could be at now, I think, would be fantastic. But we veered off that path very hard, and... Now we're just, like, lost in a swamp full of shit. So, anyway. I'm not going to get this game. I really have no desire to play it now that I've watched a playthrough of it. It took all I had to set through the playthrough of it. So, I have no interest in this. Uh, Gen 9 is coming up now, which I have to make another video talking about now. And I have no desire for that either. But for some reason, people seem to view this as their ideal Pokemon experience. And like I said, I, I will just never be able to understand that mindset. But anyway, I guess that's all I got to say. So lots of luck to you and yours.